Chapter 4 The Horror on the Hills It was while Algernon and Dr. Imbert were journeying in their subway toward Roger Little's residence in the borough of Queens that the horror was announced to the world. An account of its initial manifestation had been flashed from Spain at midday to a great American news syndicate, and all of the New York papers had something about it in their evening editions. The news graphics account was perhaps the most ominously disturbing in its implications. A copywriter on that enterprising sheet had surmised that the atrocities were distinguished by something outré, something altogether inexplicable and by choosing his diction with unusual care, he had succeeded in conveying to his unappreciative readers a tingling intimation of shockingness, of terror. Beneath half-inch headlines, which read, Hideous Massacre in the Pyrenees, he had written, The authorities are completely baffled. Who would wish to assassinate fourteen simple peasants? They were found at sundown, on the mountain's crest. All in a row they lay, very still, very pale, very silent and pale, beneath the soft Spanish sky. All about them stretched new-fallen snow, and beside them on the white expanse were marks, peculiar and baffling. Men do not make footprints a yard wide. And why were all the victims laid so evenly in a row? What violence was it that could deprive them of their heads, drain the blood from their bodies, and lay them stark and naked in a row upon the snow? 